Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to start off um, with the Valentine's nail design. So today's nail design video is going to be very subtle. It's a very subtle one. It's for all my girlies out there that kind of want to hop onto the Valentine's nail designs, but yet don't want massive hearts and everything screaming on their nails. So here is the stamping plate that inspired today's nail design. It's from Moe London and it's one of their festive collection plates. And we're going to crack on straight away with our nail design. So we've got two Madame Glam gel polishes that we're going to use today. One is a darker shade, one is a lighter. Um, you can definitely recreate this nail design using other colours. So you just want to make sure one is a lighter, one is a darker. So just like blue, you could do a baby blue and a much more of like a darker ocean kind of shade, maybe. <laughs> Although then it wouldn't be very Valentine's y, but you know. You do what you want to do, um, but I really wanted to stick with the like pink and very kind of Valentine's y, even though still it's not proper screaming Valentine's. I do have much more heart themed nail designs coming. I just thought I'll kickstart the Valentine's nail designs with a bit more of a subtle Valentine's set. I feel like I've said Valentine's like 50 times already in one sentence. Okay, let's move on. So, with our gel polish um, base colours, we've got one full nail of that darker shade. And then we've got two of the lighter shade. I think the lighter shade is called Pink Me Up. And then two of our nails are going to be the same here. And what we're doing is using the nail up brush. Now, not, not, no, 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 not a nail up brush. We're going to use the brush from the bottle, actually. You could use a nail up brush, but um, it's just going to be time, more, more time consuming. And you're probably going to end up wasting more gel polish than you should. Because usually when I take out gel polish and place on like a palette or a plate or something to, you know, use um for nail art when i dip my brush um i don't usually put it back into my bottle i don't want to put any fluffs back in there or cross contaminate or whatever happens and that way i just end up wasting more gel polish but if i just use the nail art brush the brush from the bottle i don't know why i keep calling it nail art brush then um it's just so much easier and as you can see the brush can fan out really nicely and help you create a very nice straight line so that's all great and later on we're going to kind of mask the two layers together anyways but do try and be as precise as possible because we're only going to cover it up with a black line that we're going to also hand paint on so in order to kind of maybe avoid showing the lines you could place crystals instead but we ended up putting some lines later on so here we've got some glitter I love my glitter so this one's going to be from Lyricy I tried to pick up a glitter that's most closest to that lighter shade of pink this was the closest i could get this glitter does have almost like a mixture of different colors it almost feels like it does have a slight hint of purpley in there in person it's definitely got a lot of pinks in there um and it just feels like just a mixture of different shades that are very similar but yet different and it has a gorgeous sparkle in there. i hope you can see the purple so now that we've got two layers applied we've got our sugared nail we can start um stamping so here i was running out of my black so i do end up i think changing my stamping polish but the black stamping polish I'm using is from Born Pretty. The stamping plate is Festive Collection plate number 66, which is from Moe London. I'm using my Born Pretty stamper. I prefer using this one recently for videos because just as it's just clear and so much easier for you all to see. And here I thought I would do a little bit of a trick and I picked it up and I'm going to wipe it down with some acetone and a lint-free wipe. There we go. And I'm going to restamp it. And I've been watching Maniology stamping videos that they do and they're literally amazing i love brands that are quite active on their socials and really show you what you can do with their products different techniques and everything i absolutely love that i think they're going to go so far with how they're managing their socials and by watching them i was able to notice that i don't have to rush essentially right now just because um using gel polish it's a sticky layer, so I don't have to make sure that my image itself or my stamper is sticky. In case you're using normal, um, normal like polish, you will need to make sure it's sticky and you need to work quite fast. But since I've got a tacky layer after you cure gel polish, that's going to work as our adhesive to our stamping, which is amazing. So now that we've got the image stamped on two stampers, I'm going to start colouring it in, which is called reverse stamping. So I've placed some white stamping polish from Born Pretty and I'm going to colour in the little diamonds there. So this bit here is completely kind of, you can adjust it basically to how you want it. It will all completely depend down on to what colours you decide to pick. So um, we are going to use a bit more of like a lighter shade of pink which is because I wanted to match it up with the light shade of pink that we've got going on with the gel polish so if you in case you did end up using a blue for example you'd probably want to use a light shade of blue the closest um 
shade of blue for example that you can match up with your lighter shade of blue i hope that makes sense so we've colored in the diamonds now it's time for those little birds there so of course birds are not really pink but i really wanted to keep on theme with our pinky shade so since we're stamping this image in particular on the darker shade of our gel polish i can't remember what it was called at the beginning i can't remember um but it's just a darker shade <laughs> so um that's why we're stamping it there so since we're stamping it there that's why i wanted to flip it around and use a lighter shade to match up with the lighter pink shade that's at the top i hope i'm making sense it feels like i'm just blabbing on and it's just not making sense i hope it is so i'm just going to finish carrying it in i always use a nail art brush because it's just so much easier in my opinion i will have a video coming up i'm not quite sure whether it will be already up if it will i'll leave a link in the description if it's not up yet um then keep an eye out i am planning on doing a very in in-depth kind of detailed video on how to do a reverse stamping all the tips and tricks everything you need to get started so stick around if you want to see that video and in case like i said in case it's already out i'll have a link in the description and here we are we've got our images done so there we go on both of our stampers so i'm going to pick up this nail that we've got half one color half the other and i'm going to stamp it on that darker shade and like i said the now gel polish leaves a tacky layer so it's sticky so I can just stamp it down and since it didn't cover fully down the bottom I had a bit of an image left so I could stamp it down and there we go that's our first nail done and then we can do the other nail and the reason I did two stampers at a time rather than doing one at a time was because actually I found this way I was able to not waste stamping polish because you know it dries so when you place it on your little plate or wherever you're placing it where you then you know dip into there to color um it, it dries and i don't have enough time to restamp and everything and color everything in so that way i was able to use less stamping polish and color in more images so that was great so we've got two nails done there and on this stamping plate i really like the little flowers that we have with almost looks like a little timer or like a stopwatch or something so i thought that would be quite cute to pick up and we're going to color this in as well so i'm going to use some of the white we're going to use some of that pink we used earlier as well and we're also going to use a darker shade this time as well for the petals and this shade is going to match up as well as you possibly can with that darker shade that we've got going on so often when i stamp and i use gel polishes i like to pick up colors that just match up together just to bring the colors in together even if it's slightly off it's still fine as long as not incredibly off because then you can obviously tell the difference and you know you just really want it to match up quite nicely together so with the white stamping polish i'm going to color in that center little timer clocky thing i've got going on then you want to also color in the little circles in the center of the flowers and then that very thin line that's going <laughs> around the center of the flower, uh, you want to color that in with the lighter shade, which will come in a moment. And then almost like a rim of the circle, same with the little timer as well. It's got a very thin little rim that we're going to get to in a second. And first we're going to color in the little petals with that darker shade that we've got here, which you can see and you'll see in a moment as well. It match matches up very nicely with the darker shade that we've got in the background i really cannot remember the shade number or name i want to say it's rule breaker possibly maybe not i can't remember um but i have a link in the description for the products and discount codes and all of that good stuff there as well so there we are we're going to stamp it in the center or at least maybe a bit higher than the center on one of the pink nails there and then i thought it was a bit too best still so it had this really cute little love um, image there so I thought I'll pick that one up as well so I'm going to scrape it pick it up and you're going to want to place that one underneath the image we're going to isolate it which we're just going to remove any of the stuff we don't want with our little card there and you want to stamp it you can't really see where I'm stamping but I'll move it in a second there we go something like this it doesn't look too tragic <laughs> um so we will leave it there so here we've got some glitter bells unbelievable gel and the shade black and we're just going to outline where the two shades meet nothing too thick if you wanted to you could go thick you could also place crystals there which i sometimes do to um just kind of hide the harsh line that you have and make sure you cure this gel for 60 seconds just because it's super pigmented and it's much thicker than usual as well so make sure you cure it for 60 seconds i cannot express enough how many times i've tried to cure this and i've forgotten and i did like 30 seconds or something crazy and 
it was not cured and I went to wipe it or something and it just was a bit tragic so uh, try and learn on my mistakes make sure you always pop it in for 60 seconds so once that's done we can go ahead and top coat and for today we're going to use some matte top coat so I'm just going to use my Venelisa matte top coat on these today coating all of those bad boys of course excluding the glittery nail and then you want to pop it into the lamp so the very last step here we've got some crystals to do and we've got a pretty hefty crystal placement today um, it might be actually quite easy it's not tragic um, it's just there's a lot of crystals involved and I really wanted to take out my pinky crystals so we're going to use those today although we are placing the light crystal shade on top of a, of a pinky light pink background so it might actually be, be worth to try different colored crystals maybe just some simple clear or some maybe AB crystals are pretty classic or even like pink opal could look so cool um I, I don't have any pink um, opal crystals. I know I've seen some green and blue ones, but they're super expensive. But I really want to get them one day. They're super pretty. I have the simple white opal crystals. So it'll be really cool to get the other colors because I think that would match up quite nicely today. So we'll get that in a second. And also when applying a matte top coat, I like to kind of apply a bit more than usual. And I don't want to harshly scrape on the stamping just because I do find that sometimes it does smudge. So you want to be quite gentle with it and not be too harsh and aggressive with it <laughs> so once you're done pop it into the lamp and then we'll be able to crack on with our i was about to say stamping no our crystals there we are so we've got it all cured so now it's time for the crystals so for the two nails that we've got the same here it's going to be very simple we're just going to place one crystal right at the top in the center and that's job done you could go a bit more crazy but i just kind of wanted to keep it a little bit more delicate and simple so we're going to repeat this on this nail as well. I used to use this very thin nail, nail art brush kind of for picking up a rhinestone glue gel but now I've been using my normal nail art brushes. Just one where I kind of dedicated main, specifically and mainly for the rhinestone glue gel because it's wider and thicker. It's so much nicer to actually apply rhinestone glue gel. And the rhinestone glue gel that I'm using is from Macart rhinestone glue gels. So definitely give them a go. They're literally amazing. I've been using them for years and they work pretty well I think so here is the big boy that we need to cover up so we're going to do kind of almost like a circle and a, and the image is in the circle you kind of have to imagine this yeah imagine a circle the image is in the circle and around it we have to cover it up with crystals so we're going to place um, crystals exactly where, I'm pr pr where I am placing the rhinestone glue gel sorry I'm losing my mind today I'm a bit sick still I don't know if you can hear so voicing is a little bit difficult um, and then we're going to place the crystals so it's a bit of a playing game you want to place larger crystals and smaller crystals next to each other depending on how much of a space you've got left and I don't think I place any caveat beads you could if you wanted to to do to kind of fill up maybe any gaps or any just add that extra little detail here and there if you wanted to but I felt like there was so much already going on in this nail that I kind of didn't want to tap into the caveat beads at all anymore um, in this nail design because usually I like to add the caveat beads in to add that extra look but yeah this nail had a lot going on for sure so here we're placing the crystals down as you can see it's a very pretty dusty kind of light pink shade when it's on the nail itself it doesn't kind of look as pinky as it is right now in the background when it's chilling in my little little crystal container thing so i'll probably let you guys relax watch this little bit it's quite repetitive but you'll see kind of my technique of how i do it and how i move things about and put it in place and then once this nail is done i'll come back to you guys
All right, so we are slowly finishing this nail up. I'm just going to place the last few little crystals. I'm going to pop them into the lamp and here is the final result. So if you guys liked it, if you did, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I will have all the links in the description box of what I used today along with all the discount codes for Madame Glam and Mo You London and all the other places I got all of my stuff from. So I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye guys.